Hi. Welcome to Unbias. Our mission is to put forward thought-provoking concepts, ideas, and analysis of a range of subjects. In this episode, we discuss how energy can be harnessed on a micro scale, but for wider distribution. Personal power generation for global consumption. Written by Gary Nardi. What comes to mind when you think of electrical power generation? Mega coal or gas-fired power stations? Nuclear power plants? Renewable power stations like hydroelectric dams, solar array fields, wind turbines, or indeed, large solar thermal plants. Of course, all the above mentioned options have their pros and cons depending on a range of factors. For example, to cover national demand from industry and the general population, you need more energy dense options like hydroelectric or a series of coal-fired plants. Other considerations include cost of construction, ongoing maintenance and ultimately, the cost per watt hour for that energy source. Research has suggested that theoretically, if the Sahara Desert were covered with solar panels, enough electricity could be generated to meet the entire global electricity demand. However, this would be another mega project requiring billions, if not more, and would take an age to complete. Solar panels, of course, need significant maintenance and don't last forever. We won't even mention the dangerous and toxic materials that would make decommissioning end-of-life panels a complete nightmare. As always, for brevity, we won't dissect every single option out there or even compare them. However, consider this proposition as food for thought. Household-based solar thermal plants. This would be largely based in the tropics, where there is plenty of higher intensity sunlight and therefore heat and would form a power generating belt for all countries that fall favorably within this zone. What this means is a relatively simple mechanical contraption to concentrate solar rays to a point to create an extreme heat source. This heat and energy is then used for high pressure steam, which then powers a small steam engine. Any excess power can be stored as latent heat in a tank or chemically in batteries for later use. The current estimate is that every square meter in the tropics receive on average 1 kilowatt of power between sunrise and sunset. Thus, a modest 4 square meters, which is no more than two normal sized doors side by side, is enough to power the average home. Multiply this across the entire tropics and beyond for each household and an internationally connected power grid from bordering nation to nation, and we start to get somewhere. For a mere two to three thousand dollar investment per household, we can power the entire world. Richer countries can invest in poorer and much climatically hotter nations to generate power for their consumption. Power generation would literally revolve with the planet, as countries in daylight generate power for those experiencing night conditions on the other side of the globe. Advantages of such a system: one. It requires global decorum and may lessen the chance of developed nations being aggressive toward less developed nations. Two, all the energy being used to dig up fossil fuels, rare metals to create solar panels, batteries, etc., would reduce considerably. Three, potentially a better, cleaner environment for people and life in general. Four, all the time. Cost and effort each nation puts into being energy independent could be put to solving other problems. Five, for those who may want to challenge these views, if you import anything at all for national survival, then you are already bought into globalization. Six, if all else fails, individual households can easily be power sufficient, or certainly those closer to the tropics. Disadvantages of such a system. One. If decorum fails between nations, then it could pose a serious risk to national power needs. Two, power distribution lines would become a prize target for dissenting groups wanting to cause maximum disruption. Three, weather is variable and may pose its own risks to consistent power generation. Four, the impact of natural disasters may be felt far afield from the localized area should it affect power generation and distribution. Perhaps it's time to consider overhauling how we generate and distribute power between our nations. What do you think? Let's have a debate. Share your feedback on our social media handles at Other Unbiased YouTube, and thank you for engaging with Unbiased.